Starting to stream. We already Staying started. Over. We already started the stream. Yep. Now you push play, we right? We're there. Oh, so we're on live. Well, it says we're live. You know how it always says we're live, but I I don't get to see it yet. So do I wait for it's, Sammy's screen to come up? Are you? Do, have I come up yet? Now you have. Oh, You've okay. been sitting there talking to me when you'd be talking to the fans. Yeah, sure. Oh wait, wait, wait! I got my wait, wait, wait! I got to turn my thingy off. There we go. <laughs> okay. Now we're ready. Okay. Hey, listen. Hi, you guys, and uh, I want to uh, welcome everybody to the third leg of the stream team. How's that? If you were uh, this morning, if you started our marathon of video lessons, you probably got my daughter Cinnamon, the art sherpa, and she did that fantastic trout. You know, kind of a Father's Day, really cool painting. You might be able to give Dad for Father's Day. And Angela is just finishing up her her mushroom magic over there. And we're kind of... Ooh, we're, magic mushrooms, I like and, that. And we're trying to yeah, magic mushrooms. <laughs> what we're trying to do is overlap this a little bit, you know, just overlap a little bit so that we have one continuous stream of video lessons. YouTube likes that. It's kind of a fun thing to do. I know that some of you are saying, oh my gosh, I've got to stand up, shake my arms out, and, you know, and what are we going to start? What we're going to be doing today, for those of you who are just catching see this painting, we're going to be painting this uh, wisteria and the fountain, okay? And the things that we're going to really cover are falling water you know how to make water look how to, how to make it you know look like it's falling and it's just not white paint there's other stuff you do to it uh, you know how to highlight and and add shadows and highlights to something like a fountain to make it look you know more realistic um again we're going to be mixing greens you know different kinds of greens and maybe even exaggerate the greens a bit in order for the fountain to show up and we're going to be um talking about taking, say, three colors of, you know, different shades of, say, purple and violet and applying them so that uh, our, our flowers, you know, are more three-dimensional. So that's, that's kind of the, th those are the things that we're going to be covering. What I'm going to suggest real quick is if you're just, again, if you've just caught us from Angela and Cinnamon and maybe somebody needs to get a, have a fast coffee break or something, I'm going to ask John to uh, let we, Sammy... We, we know that's what really means potty break, don't we? Yeah, that's what we mean. <laughs> well, but, but really, honestly, you know... Uh, it's been I, a while. It's, it's been a while. So, again, uh, if you want to do that, let's, let's hear a fast message from our famous bear, Sammy. John, Sammy. do you have something from Sammy that you'd look, like to oh, share? By golly, look at him. He, look at that boy. He is all decked out in his Christmas gear, and he's got his goggles on because he's been swimming. And like Sammy always says, subscribe. Have you subscribed to Ginger Cook Live? Now's the time to do it before the crowd gets in. You can't get to that button. Thank you, Sammy, for that brief message. Why, why couldn't they get to the button? <laughs> I, you know, there has to be one in the crowd. I just don't. I mean, I just you say these things, and I. Why couldn't they get to the button? Did somebody going to somebody going to grab them from behind? Them? Absolutely, they're, they're going to be pushing to get to that subscribe button so fast that everybody's clamoring for it. Okay, all right. Well, that sounds good. And you've got to mention that little bell deal here because one oh, the of the things bell about deal. that little bell thing, if you've got, you've got to push that bell. I mean, this is sometimes you know you. you there's so much to learn about computers, isn't there? And, and YouTube and stuff, and that's one of those inside things. That, how come I never know when these guys are going live? Well, when your favorite artists like Cinnamon or Angela and myself are going live, you got to have the bell you know, pushed on, you know, when you subscribe to their channel or mine, you got to push that little bell in so that you are notified on your computer or on your phone or whatever these guys are going live. So, and remember, we're recording this. This will stay up. So, you know, what I'm going to invite you to do today is just follow along with us and uh, we're going to paint this step by step. And the first thing we're going to do, again, is do the background. want to welcome everybody for coming. Thank you for coming. Uh, John, are we back down to my table now? Kind of nope, show people me, what we're doing? I'm going to stuff <coughs> you over in the corner here. One second. So we got a few people over here now that have kind of... Uh, oh. Yeah, let's give a quick look. We're at 180. All right. Well, again, thanks very much. So we're doing an 8 by 10 And the reason we do it... Look, you can do this 16 by 20 You can do this 30 by 40 there's a couple of things, reasons why we do it. We can do it. We can complete a painting this size in a reasonable amount of time. It takes far less paint to do it, so that when you're learning how to do it, uh, you're not going to waste a lot of paint. And then if you got, oh, this came out so good, I need to make it bigger. It'll be much uh, easier to do that. So the first thing we want to do is uh, uh, paint the background in, and I, I've already done that, but I'm going to still show you how to do it. Here's my, and I want you to hear this. Can you hear this? hear this drumming sound? If your canvas, and these are these little dollar 
canvases from Michaels. These are little cheap canvases, but all, when, they, when you first get them, they go thump, thump, and they don't sound like a drum. That's because you have to spray water on the back and kind of shrink that cotton a little bit and tighten that up, and that'll make it easier for you to paint. So we've, I've done that on this one. I've sanded it here. You can hear it. Hear it, hear it. Think. Wow. That sounds like a real That is drum. a really good drum, okay? Now, now that we've done that, what we're going to do is that here's the colors we're going to be using today. I just put out the ones that... Um, we're going to be using for the background and then uh, since I've already done a background once I paint this we can get right down to it okay so we won't have to fool around with the hair dryer and incidentally I want to congratulate John Little he's our uh, you know the uh, executive producer of our show and he's the other half of gingercooklive.gallery and uh, you know my, my very good friend John has upgraded all our equipment so uh, there's better sound please notice well, there's, better there's better sound. sound hopefully the sound's better, better. Feed. the feed's better we have um, this was the thing. We sold a painting and we were able to do that. That's kind of how that works. So <laughs> we you know, went, sold something so we could go ahead and upgrade the equipment so that we could have a better feed. Okay? So here's ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, burnt sienna. We'll eventually have magenta, any old magenta. I don't care what kind you have. Uh, cad red medium, of course, white, yellow oxide, cad yellow medium, and purple. Those are the colors. Um, for the background, the reason we need a background is in acrylics, the trick is you start with everything. You start from what's behind and work your way forward. Uh, you don't do that in oils, and you don't do that in watercolor, but you do it in acrylics. How's that? So it's a, it's a, different, it's a different method. It's a different technology. So we're going to do, we're going to take some white paint here and a little phthalo blue. Phthalo blue is like kryptonite. It takes very little phthalo blue. And if you're using Liquitex, it's the green shade. And, um, and then I'm going to take a little bit of ultramarine blue like that, not too much. Okay, there's a, this is sort of, this is a bright painting, and I'm going to take about 1% burnt sienna and tone that, gray that out just a hair, just so it's not quite so bright, a little less circusy, almost a French blue, isn't it? I guess there's such a thing as a French blue. All right, so I'm going to take a large brush. This is a bright number 10 Bristol on brush, but you know, any nice bright acrylic brush is fine. And I do not have, I've not wetted it, but if I were to wet it, then I would wipe it off on a paper towel or a rag like that so that I don't have any water in it. And I'm going to come up here like this, and I'm going to start painting in a down and across manner. A lot of times, if there's not a particular direction we need the brushes to go, like this is the background for woods or sky or something, this is a very efficient way to cover your canvas, okay? and down and across and you overlap and you weave. You don't start here and then jump down here and then jump over here and then jump over here because what if you do that what will happen is that your acrylics will start to dry and then you won't get a good good smooth blending. It's easy enough to make more color. Once you've got the color recipe it's easy enough even to take your brush. It doesn't all have to be exactly the same but you can blend it all in like that. We'll just keep coming on down uh, the whole canvas and now I'm going to take a little more phthalo blue here. I want this a little bit brighter up here like that. Maybe a little bit like this. Come over. See how I just kind of, I'm pushing fairly hard, but I am covering this canvas. And you want to dry this well. So if you're just following along with me, my suggestion is, um, you know, watch the video, like, you know, all the way through, you know, do this part, then just kind of let that dry as you watch what we're going to do and then come back and do it and it should be pretty well dry. We had somebody say that that um, that they weren't a big fan of using hair dryers. If you're starting three or four paintings at one time, I guess you could keep going back and forth between pictures. We're going to add a little more blue as we get down toward the bottom and uh, less of the brown here, just both blues like that, like that. There we go and blend that in. That's fine. But, you know, for me, I like to finish a painting. Do a painting, finish it, do the next one, finish it. I don't have like 10 paintings started. You know, oil <laughs> painters sometimes have to do that because they're waiting for one to dry before they can do the next one. A hair dryer isn't going to do it for them, okay? And uh, so, but acrylic artists, if you, if you like to, one of these people, I like to read one book at a time. I don't have 15 started either. You know, it's kind of how, you know, kind of my thinking goes. I like it all done. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of the, uh, the phthalo blue, come on up here like this, and blend in a little bit darker up here around the corner, like this, kind of just darken this. We'll have most of this will be in the in the violets and purples, but I want a little bit darker as we come down here like this. Okay, and maybe a little bit of white in here. Now this is going to be where my fountain is. So I'm just going to get a little titanium white and kind of maybe lighten this area just up a bit so it's a bit lighter blue. 
I don't want it too white because otherwise my water won't show up when, it's, uh, when the, our fountain is playing. Why do they think they say that fountains play? I mean, it's so weird, isn't it? Like fountains music. Play, yeah. you've, ever had a, you've ever had a fountain in your house and you bought one that's not very expensive and you get it going and it sounds like there's a toilet running? It doesn't sound <laughs> like there's a fountain. And you have to say, oh, no, that's the fountain. And then, and then, then what they do, if you've ever actually had one in the house, and then what they do is they, um, they start to mist over the side of the fountain and then they, because we have very hard water here in Texas, there's this white, horrible... Uh, uh, I don't know, mineral deposit on whatever surface you put the stupid fountain on. Right? And that's just perfect, isn't it? And yes, you know, and then you can't get that off. You're like, you know, I'm just saying that I don't have any fountains anymore. I love the idea of fountains, but certainly not in the house anymore. Okay, so that's, that's how you're going to do that, all right? So we have done that through, um, and I learned that from Martha Stewart. She used to do that all the time on her show. There we do did what? that. And then, and then, then she'd have the finished one. See, so oh, yeah. say we got. See, it's a little bit darker up here. Oh, see, that's the that's the bottom. <laughs> and then there's a little darker up here. It's a little bit darker down here, and it's lighter in the middle. Okay. Now, to, this is a very simple fountain. Okay, but I realize that there's some of you out there who's going. Oh, I want a traceable for this ginger. I don't want to even think. <laughs> I just want the traceable. So if you go to my Pinterest page, how ginger, do I get there? Ginger Cook Live, all one word. So I just go to Pinterest, put in Ginger Cook Live? Uh huh. You've okay. got to be a subscriber to Pinterest, though. Yeah. You know, but that just takes a second. Eventually, they don't we're going to get this stuff over on our website. But, you know, but I, that's fast. If you want to do this right now, it's up there right now. Okay? Yeah. And then you can just print yourself out a black and white 8x10. Um, 8x10. Okay? That's as easy. But if you're one of these purists, you know, we've got purists in this group, <laughs> right? You guys, you know, you're purists. So that would be the sock folders. Yeah, well, not necessarily, but purists in any event. So let's just say we wanted to, just for the sake of argument, uh, draw this in. What, how would we draw it in? Well, first off, we want to talk about shapes. Um, and so that's one of the things you get. I, I feel like one of the things that I try to give you on this channel is I want to empower your, you know, your sense of uh, you know, drawing tools, right? So um, if you thought about a rectangle like this, okay? Then we're going to come up here like this. I'm going to do a box like this. Okay, with me so far? And then I'm going to come up here and do this. And then I'm going to do another little box. Almost looks like you're making a cake. It does. It's like a cake, right? And then I'm going to come up here and do another little box like that. So that's basically what you're talking about. So a rectangle, let's see, I need this box to be a little wider here, like this. Okay, now a rectangle, you know, an oval is a circle that'll fit in a rectangle. See that? Oh, so then here's the bottom of my fountain here, like that, and I want it to be, I want it to kind of come up here on both sides, like that. Now I'm going to do another, like, smiley face here, so here's my next oval. Does that make sense? And then this little, this little towery thing, we didn't get too, I didn't make it real, you know, all ornate, right? This is, this is, you know, your Walmart fountain here, okay? And then, all right, so I'm going to say I've got it curved under here like this. Does that make sense? Coming up on each side like this. Almost, if you were thinking about a circle from 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock, and then we've got another, on the, this one you barely see it. You don't have the, you don't see as much water on the top. Then here's another one, and then you're just talking about a little uh, curve like that. And that's, that's how you're going to draw that in. That's pretty interesting. And then, and then you've got um, something like that, and then you've got something like, you know, here, and there, there's your fountain. Well, so, that seemed pretty simple. I mean, it's pretty simple. But for those of you saying, yeah, yeah, it's simple, but I don't want to do it. You know, I'm sorry, Ginger. It's just, just what did you do? I just want to do that. Okay, and that's fine. We get it. It's, un, it's been a long day. You said, just make it easy for me. So here's the printout, okay, of the picture, okay? And here is some Sorel. Um, and they don't pay me to say this. We buy this like everybody else. We have a link to this on our website. Sorel transfer paper comes in five colors, red, yellow, blue, gray, and white. I think white will work perfectly for us. And um, uh, you can buy this in rolls like, like wax paper, but my God, that, that will last you for years because you can use the paper over and over again. It's not a one-time thing. You just keep turning it around, okay? So, all right, so here we go. We're going to put the paper on here. Let's see, do I have some tape somewhere? Here, yeah, Let's see, You have some in the upper? Yeah, I have some, okay. I have some little tape here. Okay, so what we're going to do is one of the tricks you do um, is make sure you have the paper on the right, the correct side facing down. I'm not even sure. I have to look and see. It's, it's, it's anybody's guess. What side is it? Maybe it's this side. I don't no, know. No, I think it was the other way. You think it was the other? I don't know. Let me just try it for a second. I'm going to humor myself. 
Why not, right? Yeah, it was this oh, way. Oh, see, you were right. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, well, it's a feel. I mean, you can't really tell by seeing it. You no. have to feel it. And I can't even tell you what to feel for, except one side feels slightly waxier, though they say it's not wax, than another. It's just so, smoother. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to just put a little tape down here like that so it doesn't slide around on me, right? Okay, that's easy enough to do. It's just... There, let's just... It's just there, just like that. Cause I, all right, so here's a little tape. Now... Um, now I'm just going to put this, I want to line this up to the top of my canvas like this, and I want to tape that down too. So it's real simple when you're using transfer paper. And this is nice because you might see a fountain in a magazine that you like and say, well, Ginger's fountain is okay, but did you see this one? I want to do this fountain. And then you could just print it out. It's 8 by 10, right? And uh, if you need something slightly bigger. I do it bigger, on the left side. Huh? Tape it over on the left side. What, what? You only need to put one more piece of tape on. Put it on the left side. Yeah, good thought. So it doesn't fold the paper. Yeah, good thought. All That's right. a sock so folder now, thing. Yeah, so th yeah, it's okay. <laughs> now, let's see. I put a pin here. So let's test it real quick. Let's just test it and see if it's working. Yeah, see there? Okay. So uh, what you want to do is you use a pin. And the reason you want to use a pin is you can push fully, pretty hard with that. All right. And we're just going to come around here like that and say here's our, like our oval. And a pen, if your pen will tell you where to go. Now, if you were to use, do this again, you would do a different colored pen so that, um, you know, you'd know, right? We're not going to get too detailed on here, but we're just going to come around like that. I just wanted you to see how you might. So you just generally get the correct size of this. That's all we're trying to do, okay? You don't need to have every little bit of water falling down because you're going to be a little more creative than that. You just want to just about um, that much is what wow. you're going to say. About that much is is all you have to do. Now, you've got to admit, that's a lot faster than trying to freehand it, isn't it? Well, it is faster. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with technology. You know, we use microwave ovens. That doesn't make you a bad cook. <laughs> okay? It depends on what you're cooking. Wait a minute. Well, but I'm just saying, that doesn't, it, it, you know, just because you're, you know, you know, purists, you don't, we still use ovens in kitchens. We don't, you know, you're a purist because, well, I just cook over fire. I'm sorry, I'm a purist. You know, nobody does that, right? So it's okay to use the tools of our generations. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you? So there you go. So there's our, there's our thing. Do I have that down here? Did I get it up higher? I guess we're okay. All right, whatever we did, this is what we did. Looks a little crooked to me, but I can fix it. But I'm sure you'll do a much better job of tracing it than I did, right? But I never worry about these things because why? Because I can just go ahead and fix them. Fix it so on the fly. I fix them on the fly. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just come up here like this now and kind of elongate this out a little bit here. That's just not quite making me as happy as I'd like. So let's just take a little chalk here and do a few little repairs. I'm going to come out here like this, make sure I've got this oval going like that, and make sure I've got my this down here. And then, of course, we've got the base of this. There's a little bottom part to this, too. And here's this. There you go. So, all right. So far, so good. Okay. So we probably could put the rest of our paint out. And again, those of you who are just joining us, this is what we're painting. But apparently, you have that up in the corner, right? Down in the corner. Down in the corner, as opposed <laughs> to up in the corner. Yeah, have you ever said that, come on down and see me, as opposed to if somebody lives north of you, you always say, come on down. It's not like that's a hill or anything, right? Right. But I'm going to go up to Seattle. I'm going to go down to Texas kind of thing, right? Interesting how we decide what's up and down. All right, so now a little Dosney purple. That is one of these must-have colors. Back uh, years ago, I was uh, taking a college course with the Cinnamon. Cinnamon was in, uh, my daughter Cinnamon was in, um, was in junior college and and she wanted to take art an art course and they didn't have enough people and so I went ahead and went up and took the class with her and got a couple of my friends and there was like 10 of us up there that that, that took the course and uh, one of the things I just I had you know you can always every artist has got things they can share this is why we love it when you watch cinnamon and then you come around and watch Angela and you watch me because you're gonna learn something from all of us something different because we all have different things that we share but the thing that I got from Bonnie Newman, the instructor in that class, was she 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 um, turned me on to Dosnine Purple. I'd never heard of that color before, and what a great color that is! I've used it ever since, and that was some time ago. So and that's not really a color you can make, is it? You can't really make it. Your red and red and blue make a make a purple, but Dosnine is is uh, you know kind of all happy and unique by itself. Same with magenta. You can't really make that. I don't have magenta. The best you can do then is 
a pure red and white. And we're going to do cad red medium as an orange red, so that certainly would, would not give you the color you'd want for wisteria, okay? So, all right, so those are our colors. They're pretty, pretty simple. We're going to take a small, these little angle brushes, by, they're ruby satin silver angles. This is a 3 8 inch angle. I love these because they, you, can, you can get a lot of detail with them and fairly fast. So let's, we're going to start off with a dark color. We're going to take some burnt sienna and a little purple, okay? And we're just going to come in here and just, believe it or not, in acrylics you start with your darkest color first. I'm amazed at that it's just how many people don't realize that. They think they, well, that's a lot, there's all these light colors in there. You start with the color that's underneath the color, and it's usually the darkest one of those, okay? Now, not to say you can't come back with lights and dark and layer, but you've got to make it kind of easy on yourself. So this is just a purple and burnt sienna, and it makes almost a nice dark brown, dark burnt umber, doesn't it? Now, there's a dark shadow underneath uh, this... Um, fountain here underneath this, 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 this step of it, okay? But it, it's, um, it, you really probably, you know, if you're, it, it's really not an outline. I guess we will for now, for the sake of, of argument, outline it, but it really wouldn't be an outline particularly, okay? But we know there's something dark there, and then we're going to go ahead and um, do the post like that, our little post. And the post actually, remember, it has to kind of go into the water, so you want water behind it. Does that make sense? You want water behind it? And I want to again uh, say that uh, if you've just caught us, that we're just going to be painting. This will be a fun painting. We're not going to take hours to do this, I promise you. We'll, we'll have this done in an hour, okay, because I know this has been a long day. We really thank you guys for uh, Hang hanging in, in there, there with <laughs> us, our friends and fans. And again, um, we, we, we appreciate it very much. Um, this, this, the reason we have done three back-to-back, -back, and I mean, we're, this is not going to be every Saturday. Like next Saturday, we're not doing this, okay? Um, is that Cinnamon's birthday, my daughter Cinnamon, the art shopper, I'm going to announce it because she isn't going to tell you. Her birthday is July 1st, you guys, if you really? haven't sent her a card. 1st? July 1st. And so she wants to do something special on her birthday. And if they have some sort of birthday show, I don't know if she's announced it or she's, she wants her husband to take her somewhere or do something with the kids, whatever. I don't know what they're doing. But anyway, Cinnamon's birthday is July 1st. What day is July 1st? Uh, I give up, John. What day is July, July 1st? Well, yeah, it's a day that's coming up soon. July 1st happens to be on a Saturday. Yeah, see, so that's her birthday. So if she does a birthday special or maybe she wants to go somewhere for a birthday, you know, she does this all day long. And even on Thanksgiving, she manages to do shows, okay? So, um, in fact, we did, we did a show last Thanksgiving and the show before that. Guess what? John and I are running away for Thanksgiving this year, you guys. We're, <laughs> we're running away to, from uh, home, right? Cinnamon's going to do a show all by herself. <laughs> we're going to be going to uh, Cuba. We're going to Cuba on Thanksgiving, yeah. And we happen to be having Thanksgiving down in the Keys. Yeah, assuming we can still stopping. go. I guess that there's been some th talk about it, but assuming we can still go, we're going, right? Well, I got a notice from Royal, and they said we're still good because they follow all the rules. Yeah, so we're still going to Royal Caribbean to Cuba on the, what day are we leaving? Um, you know, that happens to be my calendar, too. Yeah, so anybody wants to come to Cuba with us and hide it, you know, it's one day in Cuba, but it's a really nice uh, a Royal Caribbean cruise to Cuba. We just, we wanted to see, it's on my bucket list, you know, things we wanted to see. So every once in a while we'll hold them. November 20th we leave. November 20th is when we're leaving. And it's a small ship, it's a little small, you know. So anyway, we're just throwing that out there. Okay, so see, I've got that, right? So that's, let's see, now let's take a little bit of the burnt sienna and put that on the inside here on the step. Now, you, you gotta just do something here. So while, the, you know, that's fine. So there it is. So this, we're kind of, you know, getting the shape of this. There we go, like that. Make sure I've got this shape here on this side. Okay, so there's my, that's my fountain. It's looking pretty good. So far, so good. Did you, now, and if you guys remember the wishing well we did, which I don't have, we, we well, gave away know, both of I those told pictures. You to go look for that. We I, gave both I of those go, pictures I go away. I what's in the hall. I promise you, John, we gave those, both those pictures away to people. We had them send us why they needed a wishing well, and we sent them both out. They were just free gifts from us to the universe. But anyway, he doesn't believe me. Isn't that funny? You know, prophets not, not, never honored in their own hometown kind of thing, you know? What's this? Oh, you have one. How do we have one? I am a stock folder. I have this mine like a steel <laughs> trap. I don't forget a thing. <laughs> wow. Do you know the other day... Uh, a friend of mine was over at the house, and John, and he had this letter from the Condominium Association, one of our neighbors, 
And they were talking about it the other day at the pool. And they said, I said, let me see the letter. And said, you read the letter. I'm going, I didn't. And both of them looked at me and said, we showed you the letter. They said, I have no <laughs> memory of this letter. I don't know what these people are talking about. I know we get, did we do three of these then? Because you we had, sent you, you two away. You did the prototype that you did first. Oh, so this is the one we did give away. One. That's the fountain, okay? Now, I like this, and I'm thinking that I'm well, just... Well, you need to put it... Uh, that that's, the, that's the wishing well. Now, here's our fountain. Imagine mm. if you had wisteria going all around the outside of this, too. You could have a pair. Wouldn't that be pretty? The fountain, and, you know, you could do this again, or maybe having some different colored flowers coming down here. I'm just saying, you guys. So this was our wishing well. That's, um, if you want to know where that is, you can go to our... Our website, and we have that as a um, as a rental. Yeah. You know, and that's uh, that helps our scholarship fund. Okay. So all right. So now, all right. So here we go. Thanks, John. I I knew we gave two away, and I don't remember doing two. You just can't go by what I remember anymore, <laughs> can you guys? Just whatever Ginger doesn't remember, but just ignore that, right? Okay. So now, while this is drying, uh, let's do a little bit of the grass here. Let's take some Cadjello medium and some Thalo blue. Now that makes a sort of golf course green. So we want to take a little Cad red medium and put in there. Red will gray green because it's opposite on the color wheel. So you never want that circus green going too much. So whenever you have a, you have to have a color wheel. You guys, these are cheap. Buy one. Okay. Nobody. I, I don't get any money for telling you this. Just you want one. So you need one. You need one. I mean, this is a you know lifesaver. So. You not want to know how to tone down a bright green, whether you got it in a tube or whether you mix in it. You always put a little red or brown in it, and even purple works because purple is red and blue, and, and yellow and blue make green. So it's <laughs> really, it's like after a while, it just becomes second, second nature. It's not hard. So we made this dark green color, and so uh, let's take a little bit of ultramarine blue with that too. There we go. So I want a dark green background coming in here like this. <laughs> now, and this I, is pretty I, I easy to paint. Who Patricia, says? Patricia is watching us outside in the outside the auto parts store. Her upset husband's inside, and she goes, "We're much better." Oh, oh my gosh! I'm <laughs> oh, so sorry. Have, you know, let me just say something, Patricia. What I think about auto parts stores. Would you like to say? Ginger, Ginger has a comment. Oh, here um, we go. You go to an auto parts store, and you stand around and twiddle your thumbs, and the people are talking cars. Nobody's waiting on you. You just sit there and. You're lucky to get, and then they can, they can drag that experience out forever. And women wouldn't put up with that. You either have the stupid part or you don't. <laughs> Tell me now, right? I don't need a philosophy on 6,000 cars and, and how great the Mustangs were in 1925 or whatever the Mustangs deal is. Mustangs weren't built in 1925. Well, I know that. But what I'm kind of just example saying, are you giving over there? I'm just saying that <laughs> I don't care. It's yucky, 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 right? What, and gals know yucky, 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 yucky? Yeah, but, not, but they don't put up with that kind of service. I, I'm uh, telling you what. And, and guys will just, they're so patient. They'll sit there and wait their turn, man. No one sits there and goes, hello, anybody <laughs> here? Are there people in the back room? They're not even at the counter. They're God knows doing what? We don't know. They're just back there, and you're going, hello. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's my experience with auto parts stores. And I, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, women wouldn't put up with that. Now, to, an example of this, and, and um, plumbing, you know, professional plumbing stores, those kind of things, similar. Back when, when Cinnamon was a baby, uh, well, no, she was like six or seven, we'd built a house. Her dad and I had built this house in California, and he'd sent me out there in charge of, um, I was in charge of finding the plumbing list. I went to the plumbing wholesale supply. And I had a list of stuff he gave me. Now, I don't know anything about plumbing, so I had a list, man. I had a list, okay? And I'm out there, and the guy says, do you want a da-da or a da-da-da? I'm going, uh, what does the list say? It doesn't say. I don't know. And he goes, and I mean, I mean we had probably $1,000 worth of stuff that we were buying from these people. Right? It wasn't a small, small order, and Colby should have gone, not sent me. But anyway, he was busy. We, the two of us built this house ourselves, right? with very little help you showed too but anyway um uh, sorry <laughs> just, how we digress <laughs> uh, just, all right so this doesn't look like anything yet but i'm going to tell you the story so anyway and you've got to understand that let's see what was i so, so you know you know i was probably a size 10 looked pretty cute right and uh, probably walked in in shorts and a nice top and there's this young man being really smarty with me and he goes you know he says um 
We only like, you know, if you don't know anything about it, you should send your plumber in here. We, we just like to deal with plumbers. And there was a real sweet kind of plumber behind me, and I turned to him and I said, so what do I need? And he says, you need this. I says, thank you. I said, I need this. And then the kid wanders off with my list after he's done a bunch of insults. This went on for a while, you know, insulting me for shopping at his stupid store. And um, to tell me how I really feel about it now, okay? So um, anyway... Uh, we're changing colors now. We've rinsed the brush. We're going to do a little purple while we're waiting for this to, to dry. See? We, Take we a do little... have a, 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 did you finish your story? No, then? I'm finishing the story. So okay. anyway, the, so the owner comes out, and he's starting to bring in the stuff. And he says, how's your day going? And I said, I just want to apologize for shopping here. He says, what are you talking about? Well, I said, well, your man, young man made, made it quite clear that um, I didn't know enough about um, plumbing parts to be buying them here. He says, just a minute. And he went back. And I knew what I was doing, too, man. Just a minute. And he went back and just tore that guy a new one, right? And <laughs> just, I'm just saying that, you know. Um, it gets back to you. It gets, you know, the yeah. owner certainly wanted my business. Now, I'm not going out very far with this. No more than two fingers because we gotta, we got to create some flowers. So a little magenta and purple. Uh, two fingers is just, approximately one inch. Yeah, we just and then as we go out, I mean, we're just coming down about a quarter of an inch here, just around the outside edge, because we have to have this color on here anyway. So we're just doing that pretty quickly. We're just coming down here like that, just kind of making a little border, because then we'll we'll get the details going. But as long as this has to dry, and I was just trying to avoid drying. Now, did you have something, some great words of wisdom to say? Well, here? no, I don't. But Houston Smith is asking. Yes. Ginger, what kind of paints do you use, and what is your palette called, and what are good starter supplies? This well, is a new okay, artist. this is I. We've got a wonderful video on oh, YouTube. Oh, we do have a on, on, video. Um, if you have a link for that, we have a great uh, video on our I art supplies. Sure I did a video on everything I have. I I'm a big fan of professional acrylic paints because you, even though you spend a little more money at the beginning, you use less paint, so it actually works out. It actually is. It saves money to use the better paint. Okay. Um, I used to have my friend Didi, who heard, told me she was from Bulgaria, and she said her dad said, we're too poor to use cheap stuff, okay? Because if you, if you're constantly using more paint. But anyway, I use a brand I get from Jerry's Artorama called Matisse. I also use Golden, and I also use Liquitex. And Golden and Liquitex are handy down at Michael's, and, you know, which is a close store to me. And, uh, but any, uh, any good professional acrylic, if you live in Europe, you're going to have different brands than those. But I think Liquidex and Golden are sold in Europe. Matisse is only sold in the United States through Jerry's, but I understand that's changing. All right, so, so far... And we're all heavy body. And we're all heavy body, which means that, you know, there's more pigment in the paint, so it's not so translucent, so it's and easier. Thicker. And you really see it in the difference in flowers. So for instance, like uh, last... Um, uh, we did a finger painting uh, paint. This was a finger painting. It was actually a, uh, who was that? It was a Ren, uh, uh, S S uh, Paul. Paul Cezanne, right? Yeah. And this was actually a copy of one of his paintings. It looked like he did his with the finger too, sorry. <laughs> but anyway, do you see how bright this red is, okay? You, you, if you're using a student grade paint, you won't be able to get that. Or um, here's a, an example of a painting uh, that, here's some paintings that, um, we also have a website where we teach fine art uh, acrylic painting and really in-depth and some of the lessons two, three hours long. And now look at these bright colors in here. You won't get those with a, um, with a student grade paint. So that's one of the reasons you might want to um, you know, upgrade to a better paint. Now I'm going to take a second and dry this. Oh, we're going to try our new mute button on our soundboard. This oh, yeah, exciting. we have a new soundboard, you guys, so wait to see if this isn't better, because we got some complaints. Why don't you guys mute the dryer? Well, when we're doing live, it was almost impossible, but uh, we, we upgraded. Here we go. We're going to try it. Okay, she's muted down, so hopefully that's softer than it has been in the past. Um, as she's doing that, I don't really have anything else to show you. Let's see what Sammy's up to. Oh, still got his outfit on. Let's see if we can get that bear. We'll put him down so he can join us. We'll squeeze him in right there. Look at there. Now you have everybody on the board. How cool is that? So far, the stream's been going good. I've got no drop frames over here. Uh, let us know how the hair dryer went. And I just pushed a button bring Ginger back. Cool. Ginger? Hi, we're back. we're back. All right, so now look, this is a far cry, a far cry. from this. 
A so what, what the important thing, and one of the reasons that videos like this are so helpful when you're learning to paint is that all paintings go through a really hideous, ugly stage before they get to the good stuff. And so if you hadn't had any lessons, you hadn't seen this, you would start this and think, oh man, I can't paint at all, I just suck at this. It is not about talent. This is a skill. This is a learning skill. So you can't say that. It's like a language, like French or English. Now, you know, uh, I have friends that um, can, can speak Spanish. And I said, in fact, we went out the other night to dinner with some friends, a friend, and she's an airline hostess. And, uh, and she speaks really fluent Spanish. And I said, can you get a job? You know, you can upgrade sometimes on the airlines. And she said, well, I don't speak it that well. Well, gosh, I think she's, you know, she can read books in it. So, I mean, there's always levels of a language. That's the point I'm making. There's levels of a language. This is the level that we're learning today, but it's, you can always get better because it's a skill, not a talent. Talent is a good idea. Talent is the guy that invented the helicopter. Skill is the guy that keeps making them. Okay? Perfect. All right. So now we're going to start on our, um, our fountain here. So we've got a little bit of yellow oxide, and that, that blues dry, so and a little bit of... Um, uh, burnt sienna, a little bit of white. This is a white paper, this is wax paper tablet. A lot of times you'll see me use paper plates too. This is uh, by Soho. I like the gray because it shows up better. Well, oh, that was clever. Let me just tear that off now. That. Look at that. What? Well, that was a big mistake. There, let me just uh. throw that away. Okay, <laughs> love it. <laughs> oh, as I cringe over here. <laughs> I know. This, all right, so now we're going to you put the paint on the brush and then you take a little paper towel and wipe it off like that and then we're going to come along here like this and we're going to start here and we want a little dark edge underneath our fountain now you see what happens is this layer of paint is sort of grabbing the uh, much easier than the last layer did all right so there's our and it's going to be lighter lights coming kind of from this direction so it's going to be lighter on this side then we're going to go above this so i have this little dark line like that. And that's what I love about these angle brushes is because they, um, uh, th you can do these fine lines or do a wide line with them. Okay, so now we're going this way. Now we've got to change the brush direction and go this other way. So I'm going to take a little more burnt sienna with that, add a little bit more, and we're going to come back. Let's see, wipe the brush. We're going to come back this way okay, can and I ask say, a and we're going to just change direction. We have a question? Yeah, I don't know when to interrupt you. Sure, go ahead. Sorry, interrupt. interrupt. Uh, Michaels has a paint called Windsor Newton and another brand called Grumbacher. What do you think of those paints? Um, you know, I don't use them, so it's, just <laughs> hard, it's, it's hard to just make a comment on paints you don't use. I've no, learned I, long I ago Windsor. that you're just no substitute for good paint. My time's worth a lot of money, um, and yours is too. I mean, you know, you could be cleaning house or painting, and, you know, um, what would you rather do, painting? So let's, you know, you don't want to be frustrated. It's got to be fun. If you're going to play hooky and paint, then... Um, then it's got to be fun. So we just lighten this up here like this and leave a no, little I, bit I of use, a dark uh, shadow. I used Windsor Newton watercolors when I was doing watercolors. Wh yeah, Windsor Newton used to be a brand that was uh, sort of like Cadillac. It used to be a Cadillac yeah. of paints. And I don't know that it's in, and I think they still are in watercolor. Uh, they're, they're not an acrylic brand I choose to use. How's that? But because um, I want, I, I want, um, yeah. What Michaels tries to do is give you different varieties of, at different costs, okay? And they're not necessarily, you, you almost have to use your 50% off coupon, which they have a lot of, you know. See, it's getting a little darker as we go back here, but not as dark as the original color, is it? See how we're doing that fountain? Isn't that interesting? I mean, how that just changed? Now we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to say we've got that same sort of this rust color here. We're going to come here and do this one on this side. It's a little darker. And then as we move to the right... Going to add a little more white, and then I'm going to say it's wipe some of the paint off. This is the darker edge of this fountain. Uh, like Lynn would that. like to know why why is Matisse changing from Jerry's? Um, I don't know that they're changing, but we heard through the grapevine. I do not know this is true. These are rumors, fast and flying rumors, right? The uh, the fast and flying rumor is that that perhaps they were going to expand their market in the United States and not make Jerry's the exclusive. But to my knowledge, that is the, the only place you can get it right now is that Jerry's are in Australia. So um, so I don't know that that's Matisse true. Is in I Australia. had heard that from people, you know, from you know. But I, again, these are how rumors get started, you know. So you've got to be, you know, I don't know that to be true. Right now, the only place you can get it that I'm aware of is Jerry's. Um, and and and. Uh, you can buy it online. 
Um, which well, a lot is, of people are saying that Windsor Newton acrylics are good because they're using them. You have a lot of Europeans on, and that's what they have there. And they like them. Well, yeah. you see, that's good. So, you know, you can't, you know, you can't, we, you know, nobody you gives certainly you can't this try paint. Them all. You can't try them all. I know, for instance, that I like Liquitex, but I'm not a big fan of their basic paint, okay? And I don't, you know, and, the, you know, I like certain, certain, um, <sighs> certain brands of paint better. See, I'm going to just sort of lighten this right here a little bit right there, and then, then I'm going to come back here and add a few more lights. It's just the same colors we're using. We're just kind of lightening them up a little bit here like that, and the same thing here, because acrylics, acrylics, bless their hearts, dry darker. So you think you've got a pretty good color, and you turn around, and you look, and it's not, okay? But that's, a, that's I would say that's, a, let's do a little light edge around the edge of this. Um, Let's wet the brush because you know what's happening is your paint's drying and your brush as fast as it's drying on the um, on the canvas. So every once in a while, just rinse your brush. Now see, I'm just barely touching and holding it like that. I can look at that nice edge I can get. Let's make this a little bit lighter on top, a little bit lighter edge right here. Whoop to doop doop. There's a lot of brands of paint out there, bro. There mm -hmm. are, and, and you know, and when I first started uh, painting with acrylics, Liquitex was the only one that made them. You know, another really good brand is Utrecht makes a very good brand of paint. Utrecht is good, I, you know, um, I like them too. So I mean, there's different, but the ones that I use all the time. Here's a little purple. I'm going to add a little shadow here, and come back here and a little bit of purple and get a few little shadows going, this way, like that. Okay, so there's our fountain. Um, um, now, in order for this fountain to show up, one thing we can do is um, you know put in some grass so we we'll take some yellow and add it to that green color we had now if you don't have one of these little mister water bottles these are handy please don't use a windex bottle these remind me a lot of the old uh, hand pump hairspray bottles with really fine mist these jerry sells these they're soho mister bottles like a buck would throw that in on your order um, or you know other uh, atelia makes one for atelier makes one for more money but anyway i'm sure you could find these someplace but little Mr. Bottle, you kind of spray your paint. Now, we're making a little bit lighter yellow. We're going to add some yellow oxide to that because that's got a little red in it. It's a little gold color, okay? Wipe the brush off because we've been painting with it. Now, here's the trick with grass. We're going to do some up and down strokes like this, kind of miscellaneous up and down strokes like this. Two, 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 two. This is our layers, okay? And we're going to say we know that we want something lighter back here behind our uh, fountain and we know that for instance right under here um, under the fountain right here, remember we said the dark edge was so you pretty much have to have a um, contrast wherever there's a light there's a dark that's the rule okay that's a good rule it's a good rule so you know so one thing I encourage everyone to do is that just I love cell phones and that you can take your you guys know how to do that and take your camera and you know, turn it into a black and white image and take a picture of your artwork and then you know turn it black and white and look and see if you have enough contrast and look at the picture you're copying and um, you know, photograph or whatever and then make that a black and white image print that out and make sure you have enough contrast so you add a little more yellow oxide here I do this I don't even think about it I just start doing it start layering on a little more yellow oxide let some of this dark show through um, kind of come up this way like that and uh, let's then we're going to come around like this I want it a little bit lighter back here here we go kind of next to here like that do to do Lynn says she got from Matisse sent her a tension breaker to make um, the Matisse paints into a watercolor a tension breaker I have not tried that that sounds like that, something that sounds I'd like, like to that try. might be fun. Yeah, we yeah. should try that, right? And oh, I love all the stuff that you can get with paint. Now we're just going to leave that alone. It's not perfect, but it's it's a start. Now let's take a little bit of that uh, beige color we made before and take a little of that green and add to that. Okay, mm -hmm. so we've got this sort of beige celery color, and I put a little of that green highlight right there on this one, just like that. This is all about. Remember, I told you it's all about layering. Let's get a little of that kind of green celery color up here on the fountain next layer, okay? That's all very easy to do. Now, what? Um, okay, how about a little bit of yellow and cad red medium? Let's make a little orange color. That's pretty. Now, let's just ooh, wipe the brush off. Here's a little, little bit more red here, okay, a little orange. Let's add a little bit of orange coming around here. This is our next layer, see? Like that. And how about a little bit up on the rim here? And maybe a little bit over here like that. A little bit of a rust, maybe a little bit of 
a burnt sienna with that, make that a little darker. Okay, a little bit there like this. Take a little of the light, pull it like this. Here we go. So far, so good, you guys, right? Looking good and, so far. And then, you know, just a little bit like this. It almost looks like a copper, copper pot type thing. Yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? Now, let's take a little bit of purple, come underneath here like that, make sure we have that shadow underneath the base of this. And one thing I did, a little bit of purple and burnt sienna, and I made a few little cracks in this, um, you know, I kind of, I kind of niched this up a little bit, like somebody had, you know, got chipped up a bit with some little dark things here like that, just a little dark thing here like that, and then this is like that. Okay, not to get too detailed, but that's what we did. All right, now let's put some water in our fountain while we're waiting for all this stuff to dry. See, it's coming along. It's not hard to do. How, what, what's our, what's, how are we doing time-wise? How are we done? Why, do you have a date? You going somewhere? No, I just want to, I said I could do it in an hour. I want to see if I can. <clears throat> if I told you it's been 55 minutes, what would you say? You're lying? No? If I told you it was been 35 minutes, what would you say? Sounds right. Does it sound right to you? No, 45. Oh, gosh. Okay, sorry. <laughs> well, all right, so we're keeping along like this. Now a little bit of darker blue, like that. And pulling it in here like that, into our fountain, like this. Okay. Now, let's take a little bit of white, just, uh, let's see, pinch the brush and take a little bit of the titanium, okay? Now, while this is still wet, just touch it, keep little, we're just doing some little splashy things here like this, in, into our fountain like that. So you have some blue and you have a little bit of white, okay? Now, you don't see really the water in either one of these, but what you will see, okay, what you can see is you've got to imagine that the water's coming here like this, curving and then flowing over go, falling over straight down like that and let me put some more titanium white out because it's kind of blurred right okay so that's the trick it just it's got to it's going to come over the top of the fountain and it'll be a little lighter up here where the um i'm using just the corner of that brush and now as it comes down i'm just almost like hair think of stringy hair right maybe as opposed to water now Straight down here in any part of the fountain that you didn't think you did such a hot job on, do that, do it there too, <laughs> like that. There. Now we're going to say it's coming over the front of this one right here. Here it is, it's and then straight. Get away and, and hide things. Yeah. So just kind of you get it up a little higher than that, and then drip it down. Maybe you can separate it like that, and just touches the water like that. Have you kind of zoomed in on this for me? Yes, ma'am. You did. All right. So then I'm going to come over the edge of this one right here. Just barely see the corner of this. And then again, straight down. There you go, like this, and the same thing. Let's just do a small one here, like that. Here we go. Look, the, there we go, and around. You could do a pointy brush on this too, a little round brush. Some of these should be thinner than others. Okay, a little bit more white in our fountain, like that. So there's coming down. Now, uh, when that dries, we'll add a little bit of. We'll, we'll shade the water a little bit. Right now it's just white, but we'll add a few, we'll glaze back the water, the white, so that it's just not pure white, but it's not pretty. And then, because you really don't, you just don't see that much of the, um, the fountain, right, like that. That's all you're going to see. So, while that's, now we're going to take some purple, and you should dry this, probably, if you're happy with it, right? We take some purple and magenta, and we're going to come along here like this, and we're going to tap in above the fountain, um, I want you to think of an arch kind of like, um, it's kind of coming up like this and around like that, okay? Like an arch, okay? So now just, if you draw it in, you'll be more likely to get it where you want it to go. And we're just tapping it using the corner of the brush. And we're going to say that there's some flowers that are in this kind of arch and they're some sort of trellis. And um, they're coming down, this is purple and magenta. And they're right next to the fountain here, and then right next to this corner here, coming down like that. But you want to leave some blue space around it, okay? And the same thing here. Any other questions why I'm just tapping this in? Uh, <clears throat> no, I'm sorry they're not. Well, it's all right. Well, again, we just, um, we want to, everybody, we want to say it too, is to thank everybody that's been playing in our auction. We're real happy with the new auction software we got. And if you're going, what auction that you guys have on our website, besides some, all the wonderful um, uh, videos that we add, and new videos every week for our subscribing members, um, anybody can come. Uh, we have a, a new site, our auction site, and there were these puzzles. Now I'm starting to add a little bit of white to this. 
I want this in, in magenta because I want this a little lighter right here. I'm just tap this down, not into the water. This is on the other side of the fountain, okay? So now we're into white and magenta. So we've got these cool puzzles. I can show you real quick. There's like eight different ones, and they're out of print. These were originally published and sold all over the world, and some of them Target and Walmart. And anyway, there's this, you know, we've got eight different ones. And uh, you can see this one like there, uh, C. Martins. So anyway, um, and my favorite one, I've got to show you this one. This is so cool. This is my favorite one of all. This was uh, uh, the featured artist on here. It's the Art Artist 5 collection. This was sold in uh, uh, Walmart. There's a 1,000 pieces in this one, 750 in mine. Five different artists. Norman Rockwell, and right next to him is my painting. And I thought to get, to get my artwork uh, you know, published on a puzzle that, you know, by a publisher who put me right next to Norman Rockwell in that category was pretty, that's, that was a big deal to me. All right, I so. Would be too. Um, all right, so we're doing a little bit of, just a little bit of white and magenta now. And we're, we're just saying, now remember the light's coming from this direction. So we're saying that, and you want some that are kind of, some little loose ones that are coming out like this. So they're not all just, it's not a complete, you know, like a headband, right? It's not a headband, okay? So you've got some darker colors underneath coming down like this. And then you get into the white and you've got some lighter ones while it's still wet. You're just tapping these on. You've got to do this while it's still wet. Wipe your brush, a little bit of white, just on the edge of the of the, the long end of that little angle brush. And see right up here, I'm tapping in some light ones R like Ron that. Ron is asking, um, why not zinc white for the water? Um, you could use zinc white for the water. But uh, we're going to, you know, like I say, you could try it and see. I just was trying to keep it simple. But zinc, nothing wrong with zinc white, though you do need some titanium with it. But try it with zinc. If, if you may like it. It's a good question. Why not use zinc white for the water? Um, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Susan's husband just walked in and said, are, are you watching another art, art documentary? <laughs> art documentary. Yes, I love it. Yes, you right? are. All right. So you see how we've got that behind that fountain. That's sort of pretty, right? So now let's go ahead and work on these. So let's take some purple now and get down and a little, ma and a little magenta, sort of half and half. Let's come down here. If you've got to think about... Um, Time. Where's our chalkboard? Um, just take me take a second and show you on the chalkboard what I'm talking about. Wisteria, they kind of fall, kind of like if you imagine grapes, they're sort of falling like this, okay? And and if they're coming out from the side like this of, of this trellis, and then eventually they fall down. Think of waterfalls of flowers is the way I'd put it. So they're coming out in the corner, right, like this. And I think of kind of the shape of grape clusters is kind of the way I think of it, right? So you don't, in other words, so you don't, um, you don't want this, okay? Right. Or, or this, okay? All right. So good. Everybody's clear on that. Yep. All right. So just sometimes you just have to keep the shape in mind. Here we get a little bit of white with that. So we're going to come out from these now. We're going to come, let's just say we, here's our cluster coming down like this like this, and here's another one coming down, and then maybe this one's longer, it's not a fence, so maybe this one's longer, okay? And I'm getting new paint for each, almost for each group of flowers. I'll do a couple, and the minute I start doing stuff, now maybe these are shorter right here, and I'm going over the dark, so that dark was just sort of an underpainting for it, okay? And uh, pur purple, white, and magenta, and then I'm gonna come in here like this. This one's kind of going at an angle like this, barely touching it. Okay, just touching these down here like that. And I think the more you paint these, the easier it would be to do. So I'm just saying, here's this little group, and now we're going to add a little ultramarine blue with this, because there's a, there's a blue cast to some of these, too. So that's here. I'm going to just show you here. So a little ultramarine blue in this corner here like this. I like that. I like that different so that, color. That's sort of that pretty blue color, and that's our... Now, a little ultramarine blue, a little bit of white over here. See how I tap it on the, I tap it on here to see if I like the color before I put it on here. And if I didn't like the color, I wouldn't do 15 strokes of a color I didn't like. Does that make, I see people do that. They'll, they'll be teaching a class and they're going, I don't like the color. Well, why are you still painting with it? <laughs> Stop <laughs> it, you know? So uh, here we go. Norman's asking, is canvas board good to paint with, paint on? Um, canvas board, you know, it depends what you want to do with it, okay? So if you're just learning to paint, canvas board is a very inexpensive surface. It's difficult to paint on, much harder to paint on than canvas. Um, 
I like those little canvas pads that we use on our website where we have, um, it's real canvas and they're just in a pad if you're just practicing. I'm going to bring one of these out a little further, okay? And, uh, but then, um, canvas board is, uh, again, very difficult to paint on because it's just, uh, it's canvas glued to a piece of board and it's, it's usually pretty crummy. Usually, I'm, I'm trying not to get sued here, it's usually pretty crummy. In my opinion, it's usually pretty crummy. So then what? Um, well, there's a couple of things you can do to canvas board that make it a little better. You can take a, um, like you'd put peanut butter on toast, you can take something called molding paste or modeling paste, and you can just cover the surface with it and let it dry for 24 hours, and then it paints pretty nicely, okay? If you're selling paintings, if, you intend, if you're painting and you intend to sell something, here's some more of that little blue color with the more of the blue, ultramarine blue with that color here. If you want to sell stuff, okay, um, canvas board is not your best foot forward, okay? Just think about, th think about putting your best foot forward here when you're trying to sell something. And canvas board would be not anything I would want. Um, now, masonite, on the other hand, and they make a, like an ampersand board. They make like wooden board. You know, that stuff's expensive, the boards. Masonite's pretty cheap. And again, masonite, um, you have to really gesso it. Uh, yeah, you but like you can go to points. Home Depot and they'll, um, um, they'll cut you up a whole sheet of masonite. For, I, I think it's Home Depot. They'll ch chop it up for free. Then you can gesso it. And I don't, I don't think you'd be ahead, really. The problem, what everybody's trying to do is save money. Well, I like to buy the canvases. What, what did we just buy on sale for on Michael's? Michael's just got the 10 pack for 10 bucks. 10 packs of a dollar canvas. And to me, that makes total sense, doesn't it? You know, to, you know, to try to just get it in, on sale. Yeah, and I've seen, Jerry's, I've seen Jerry's Autorama do their real expensive um, canvases on sale once a year. I've seen them up to 90% off. And the big sizes, I mean like six, you know, 48 by 60, I mean big canvas sizes, okay? So we're coming back with a little dark purple. All right, so there's, you see how this is coming around here, okay? Not, not too bad, right? You're getting there. It's looking good. You so, only have four I, minutes to go. I think you can do it. So now, here's what you can do. I'm going to switch brushes, and here's where a pointy brush might come in. This is a Bristol on number one. It's a round brush, all right? So I'm going to wet it, wipe it off. Now I'm going to go into my, I'm going to put the white paint over here where I might use it. Just a little bit of white and magenta like that. And I'm going to put the brush straight up and down. So I'm going to come up here like this and tap in these little dots like that uh, on the uh, this isn't like stars you guys they're, the white dots aren't everywhere they're the lights coming from here so the dark part of, of the flower is uh, is going to be you know is in the shadow the shadow part <laughs> of the flower is dark and then you've got a light part so to think about the light coming on the top of it overlap maybe just go off on its own a few places like that get get some new paint for each one come on down here like this these are these little groupings of flowers Come on down, let's see, here we go, down, 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 light, 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 and just straight up and down with the canvas, little dots overlapping and touching, okay? Some here, of these may be all light. Here's a good question for you. Mm -hmm. What do you do when the frame costs more than you sell a painting for? Um, the problem with frame, picture frames in general, is that, um, and, and I've seen this from years of selling and painting and being a professional artist, is that you paint a picture and you frame it and you really like it, you know? And the person comes along and says, well, that frame's got a chip in it. I need something off. Or I would buy that, but I hate your frame. I never frame anything anymore. I, um, I, uh, I, su I strongly suggest that you um, use gallery wrap canvases, the wider ones, you know, the big wider ones like this, not these skinny ones, because these are practice, right? But the wider ones. And... Um, and then uh, let the person frame them themselves, okay? That is absolutely the best because no two, you know, that's the, the thing, the most complaint you're going to hear all the time is it doesn't go in my house. I like this really well, but I hate your frame. Or your frame's chipped or the frame's damaged or there's something wrong here and I need a discount. Everybody thinks that somehow you're in the market for a discount. <laughs> I don't know why they think you, they're entitled to a discount from you, but they do. And... Um, um, it's just the way they are. It's just the way they are. And sometimes the frame does cost more. And then it depends where you got the frame and, and did you get it on sale and all that stuff. 
and you're not going to get it on sale the next time. So the next time they come, they said, well, the last painting was cheaper, and it had a frame. Well, you got, the, you got a better price on the frame maybe that time. Or you just had, had one. I've got a really great frame up in the attic. I mean, it's 30 by 40. It's the most, it's like this wide. It's the most ornate carved thing you've ever seen. It's really heavy. And when we have a garage sale, the first thing I'm going to do is sell it. You know? Hey, thanks, Bonnie, for being there with us. Bonnie's going to call it a night. Oh, well, thanks, Bonnie, for playing. I, guess, I hope you understand how we painted this down. You can come back and watch this video, right? So good, right? Here's a little bit lighter ones here. See how we're doing the light colors here? Get a little bit more magenta here. Just start pulling in the magenta over the purple. This is all about layering. Maybe we'll come up here and do a little bit up here as long as I'm up here like that. Maybe something in here toward my fountain like that, okay? So, yeah, those are, that's the thing about frames. Uh, but, you know, for yourself, you should frame it. And um, I have a whole, I, I, found, I found, years ago, I found wholesale framers. You know, that was the trick. Or you want, one of the things you can do, like a painting like this, an 8 by 10 if you go to somewhere like, um, talking to our American friends here, I don't think you have that in Europe, a, a Hobby Lobby or something, you can go find a print that's in a frame, and um, take the, and they've got the print on sale and the frame's practically free, and take the glass off and everything, and then just use that frame, or you know wait till frames are on sale. Um, I, I would I would has one of the things you want to do if you're going to be selling things is you want to paint in sizes that have ready-made frames. That's a nice thing to do for people because. Uh, for instance, most square, most companies do not sell. Jerry's is about the only one I know that sells any square frames, okay? And um, so, you know, it's fun. If you're going to do a square picture, then like we did the rooster there on um, YouTube, we got that one with the rooster that's square. i going to make, make yeah. this a little longer. Let's bring this down, start bringing our wisteria down a little bit now. Bring it, bring it in a little closer. Now I'm Michelle's gonna asking a, uh, a question here for you. So far, I have only gifted my paintings to family and friends. I can't bring myself to charge them or accept anything. I am not sure how to go about selling to others. Any suggestions? Yeah, well, the first thing you've got to do is believe that, um, that, that, you have, that what you've done has some value, okay? Because if you don't think it has value, no one else is going to think it does. So that's the first thing is to start having a little more confidence in what you're doing. And the thing of it is, is the family is begging you for painting, right? And sometimes they do. Or, you know, your sister's getting married, or Aunt Susie really needs this, and you should do this for us. So, you know, I'd love to do it. Um, my art budget is so tight that what I'd really appreciate from anybody is that if you could cover my materials, that would be really nice. And that's not a terrible thing to do for family, right? They should help contribute something. To contribute to the, you know, your well-being of the materials, right? I that's would think not so. too much to ask. Because if somebody has a, what we call a little skin in the game, they're going to be much more likely to take care of it, right? And, um, you know, you can say, you know what, um, I'm happy to give this to you. Um, do you think your husband could come over and um, help me with my plumbing? I've got this problem with the dishwasher, and I've been trying to get it fixed, and you haven't wanted to ask him. And I'm not really trading it, but just would be a nice thing to do as long as we're just doing nice things for each other. That would mean a lot to me, you know? I mean, that's one, th that's one way to kind of deal with relatives, Okay. And then, then for people, for, for uh, you know, put it up on Facebook and um, figure out what your cost is. This comes into, um, my daughter Cinnamon has a whole video on how to sell things. But I think when you're first starting out, this is my personal opinion, when you're first starting out and you're just like what you said, where you're at, um, put it on, you know, figure out what it costs you. Not your time, but you got maybe $5 in paint, a dollar in canvas, you know. Um, you can't count the money you spent on your art lessons, but, you know, everything else. Your, your, your materials, right? So don't take less than that. You've got to recoup that. And, um, and then just, um, you might just there. put it up on fa Facebook, Facebook and go from there, right? We're getting a little blue here. See how I'm adding a little bit of this ultramarine blue here in a couple places? Kind of add a little bit of shadow here and over here on this side behind this one. Okay. Now, that's, that's coming along pretty nicely. Now, let's take some more white Back and magenta. Out, take a look at it. It's pretty, right? Isn't it coming along nice? Let's yeah, get a it's lighter. Really good. Again, we're going up once. So see how many layers of colors we're doing? No, you, you're just kind of letting that set as you went around other areas, so it's not fully dry. Yeah, but it's, it's not fully dry, enough. but I'm, just, I'm, I'm adding a few more little white air, air edges here in a few places and, you know, dripping some down. It's just, I think about flowers dripping, right? 
the lighter edge is on the top like that. And that's kind of pretty. And then maybe I'm going to come in from here. Clear back here, there's one that's another one. Remember, there, th this is groups of them, okay? So maybe they're coming back here, or maybe over here. We have one that started over here. I still like these. I'm just almost pure white because my brush is dirty. And I'm doing these little dots of color, almost straight up and down with the brush here like that. Now, we haven't come back and put any of the green in it, but it's still very pretty, isn't it? You get the idea of how you might paint something like this. So, um, all right, so let's get a few more of these little these little pink colors in, like that, those little peach colors, like that. Ooh, that's pretty. And John, again, are those flowers coming out of the fountain, or are they on an archway behind they're it? They're on an archway behind it. The flowers are on an archway behind it, okay? So this is why we've got the, sort of the dark purple in front here like this. There's, they're, they're on an archway behind it. All right, so now I'm going to just put that brush in water, grab my little angle brush, and while that's drying, I'm going to just take some yellow and a little bit of white paint and a little tiny bit of phthalo blue, and I'm going to make a really light yellow, okay? And this is brighter than I normally like. Let's see, let's take a little more white, more yellow, a little bit of yellow oxide. I want this really light, tiny bit of red, very little, more phthalo. want a really, really bright a yellow green. Let's see, I don't still don't have enough yellow. Okay. What, what so brush are you using? I'm just using a little angle brush. This little the three eighths. Three eighths inch angle. Three right. eighths inch angle. Yeah. So, all right. So there's my color. Okay. Now I'm going to wipe the brush off. There we go. Now I'm going to just touch it in here like this. Do you see what I'm doing? And that you see that green looked pretty bright before, didn't it? But it didn't. So we're just doing these little tiny brush strokes. Grass is up and down like this, and coming across like this. And we're going to, you know, brighten it up a little bit in front, maybe like this. Um, say it's a little bit brighter. Let's do a little more yellow here. This is almost like color surprise with a little bit of almost more yellow on the brush, almost pure yellow in a couple places. And brighten it up in the front here of our fountain. And if you just sort of patch it on there. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little more blue and add to that, and even some ultramarine blue, make another green. Now I'm going to come up here and touch in some green up here into my flowers into a few places. A few little green leaves here like this, particularly underneath here. Some green coming under here in our fountain like that. All right, same thing over here. Want some more green. And um, up here. And then let's see, what about up here? Let's just say purple, yellow, dark green here. All right, so we're going to say that right up in here, we've got some, um, I want to just say I've got some green plants growing here, up here like that. Let's see, put a little white with that. Just a little bit more white. Okay, so I've got some green plants this way. It's just sort of while it's still wet. And let's see, what about back in here? Yeah, we need a little bit of greenery off coming up here like that. Okay. Now, I have in this picture, do you see it? you see this darker color behind the fountain? And I don't have it here. And you see what a difference that makes when, if you don't have this dark color? So um, what we have to do is sort of dry the purple so that we can go ahead and put that back. You know, I need to have that dark color back in here. So it's more of a blue-green color. And um, let's see, a little bit. So it's thalo blue, a little bit of that green color in white. I want this sort of a um, little bit more green to it. I want back in here, like this, I want to say that this is a little bit darker, kind of back behind my fountain, like this. Okay. A little bit of a shadow. And let's see, that's some water there I don't want. Come under here, like that. All right. Probably should have done this first, but I. That's that was going to be a question. Is, would, should that have been done before you put in the. Yeah, it would have been done. I should have done it first. It wouldn't have hurt, right, to have that a little bit darker in there. But I'm just sort of darkening it up behind the fountain, okay? Now, like that. So see that see that gave that fountain a little more depth and maybe a little bit darker right up in here like this. So that you've got these are almost like, there we go, something like this. So now that brought the fountain forward. You see the difference what that made when we brought the fountain forward? Now, what I can do is I'm going to rinse my brush and wipe it off and... Just in a couple places, and I just don't do that. I want to put a little bit of that 
um, color just okay so you see I put a little bit of that kind of um, soft almost like a watercolor wash over that white now and I want to take a little bit of the purple too and take a little bit it might be reflecting a little bit of the purple just a purple a little bit of a purple wash and coming down over my water like this. Let's see, that's too much, so let's wipe that off. There you go. So we're sort of staining it. I want you to think of like a tea stain, sort of staining this water a little bit, like that. Now, I've done that. Now I'm gonna take white, which I don't have any more of. And I'm almost done here. Take white. That's looking good. And now I'm gonna go over that one more time, over that stained, it's a pure white, all right, down here to the water, a couple places. All right, just so some of it's, some of it's, yes, so the question is, could you have used mixing white? Uh, yeah, could have, but I want a little bit more white right there, and I want a little bit more white in my fountain like this coming around. And, oh, I had a little bit of a dark, let's see, purple and burnt sienna. Um, I, I have a little bit of a dark ledge back here, behind here like that. Like that, there you go. Right there, like that. See, a little dark edge right there. And I want to float some flowers. I want to float some flowers in there. So let's take a little bit of magenta and white and maybe a little purple. And let's just float some little. Cynthia is asking Would you choose different subject matters based on whether you are using acrylics versus watercolors? No. I wouldn't change, the, no, uh-uh, no. Same subject, just different so, techniques. Di di different technique. You'd certainly do it differently, though. You would certainly, you'd certainly do it differently. You would have to do it differently. Yeah. Okay, so we've got some flowers right here on this corner that we're going to put in. So let's take a little bit of yellow oxide in, in, in yellow, and let's do a few little, let's start up some little yellow flowers that are growing up in here like this. Kind of, we're going to kind of hide the edge of this fountain right there, like that, some sort of little yellow flowers. Okay, and then we've got a little yellow and white now, same color with a little white on it. And let's just say we've got some little, um, some sort of little flowers over here, kind of different than those, but maybe we've got something coming up here like that. And this, this side, okay. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of pure yellow and do a few little light dots on. Remember the light's coming from this way, so some of these might be a little brighter. That would be pure yellow. Just cad yellow medium, one, one dot and lift, one dot and lift. One, two, three, four, five, stop. Okay, you don't need a lot. Now, um, we've got to have a little green there, back there, so let's just tap in a little green, a little bit darker green. Always add more blue, make a darker green. Let's tap in a little darker green right in here for those. Okay, so we've got, do you see these three little blue flowers? We've got some little blue flowers here, okay? All right, which is good. And now, yellow and blue make green. So if I want to put blue flowers here, I have to dry that yellow. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. Okay, because otherwise I'd end up with green flowers. And you've already got... No, and I've got, you know, that. so I don't want that. So I'm going to take a second. John, do you have any questions you want to me answer? And I can... Do I have any questions I want to answer? Yeah, or I me answer before I put the hair dryer on. I think we're good. Don't think so. All right, so here we go. Wait, wait, wait. No. Well, you have to wait till like you know, whatever happens in one, two, three. You know. It's four, five, six. What? <laughs> you used to go one, two, three. I'm going to dry. You don't do that anymore. If one, two, three. Yeah. Okay. Boy, I tell you, she caught us on that one, didn't she? All of a sudden, we're going to start drying. Hey, just as a friendly reminder from our, our famous bear, if we can find him, if you haven't subscribed, Sammy says, subscribe now. Now's the time to do it while Ginger's drying. Nothing to see here. Oh, she's back, and she wants to be turned back on so we can hear her. What? What, what? What? I'm what, back. Where? What were you saying? Sammy just put up the subscribe message. Oh, good job, Sammy. All right, so we're going to go ahead and um, start with the ultramarine blue and a little bit of white, but not want a fairly dark color here. 
uh, not as dark, you know, so let's make a little more, like probably three-fourths, you know, maybe 10% white in the ultramarine blue. And we're going to come up here with some little flowers, and we're going to dot them up here, with little dots. We're going to make these little, um, I think maybe more ultramarine blue. We're going to come up here like that, and we're going to say, here's some flowers, and they kind of, here's like a little stem, and maybe we've got some that are peeking up behind the other side of the fountain over here like that. Okay, so then pure white, because this is wet. Now, here's the deal. Dot, dot on the left hand side of the flower do these little dots and push and lift push and lift get a little more I'm white push push and lift push and lift and because this is still wet it's going to make kind of a light blue flower on the left it won't be pure white but that's okay so here's our here's our little flowers here like that and then back over here like that we're just tapping in some blue ones all right so those are some little blue flowers right there, and then maybe we'll take some little, some yellow and make a little bit of a light green around here. Just kind of give them some, give them some shrubs to, to live in, right? Okay, like that. Those are those little flowers. Um, now, what can we do when we're looking at this? What, we want to go around the picture now and look and see, is there anything I can do, you know, is it, when you take a minute and just maybe hold it up to a mirror, look at something. Do I need to add some, for instance, do I need to come down here with some more purple flowers? Or for instance, right in there, would I need some more purple flowers, some more white ones? This is what you kind of do. You stop a minute and just take a look at your patterns, your designs, right, and see if you like it. Maybe you got too carried away. And I'm not, it's easy to do, right? And you need to actually come back with some light blue and Which maybe poke a hole. Which brush have you shifted to? What? Is that your new Bristol on? That's the Bristol on uh, number one. Uh, 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 it's called a round, number one, Bristol on round. Number one round. But Bristol maybe on. you need to come up and poke some sky back into your, um, into your uh, flowers. Maybe you need to come up and you remember how you made that darker sky, right? Um, Maybe you need to come and uh, this is where you kind of you know kind of filling in the last of your um, your your finishing details. That's what I wanted to say. Kind of finishing details. Um, the final touches. Your final touches. I'm looking at this water right here. I'm pinching my brush because I've changed colors. It's coming this way, but and then it's got to go down. So maybe it's got to go down here too. That didn't really make the curve right for me. So then I just put another little strand down, and I want a white line around the base of the fountain right there okay a little bit of a white um you know like that i want to make sure i have that okay and um let's see um i'm, I'm pretty much sure that's kind of you know i think we're pretty much done here as far as um you know that well, goes i'm looking at the original yeah do you see anything i've missed here well, i'm seeing a little bit more green in the upper right corner in that top area. Up in here? Higher up. No, up in the top. Oh, yeah, there was some more green leaves, right? And yep. then, see, I'm coming back over with the yellow, see, because that kind of dried. So, yeah, let's put, some, let's put some more green leaves back up in here like that. Kind of, you know, thalo blue and a little bit of yellow, a little bit of um, either purple with it or ultramarine, kind of darken it up. Here's, here's a little bit of green up in here like this. <laughs> Just here we go, like that. <laughs> what? What's the matter? Just how quickly you know what to do and how fast you do it. Well, I mean, I made it up the first one. So, you know, you, you know, when you say it's not like the original, the original was mine. So maybe I made a better version this time. So you can't always go by that. Does that make sense? So the original may have had something and I just, you know, I've overrid the, overrid, overridden the decision. Like, for instance, I like a little bit of this gold in the grass right here. You know, some of this yellow oxide right here. I like a little bit of that gold right here in this grass. And I think I'd like a little more white with this and make, make this lighter green color. I'd like a lighter, a little bit of a lighter green, whoops, lighter green, as soon as I got some color there, let's wipe that off and put it on right. A l little bit of lighter green here, maybe, okay? Um, maybe something light here, like that. Here's some white, here's some yellow. Um, maybe lighten this green up right here. Because remember, as it dries, okay, as it dries, it changes. Here's a little bit of these lighter green colors right here, like that on here. There, there we go. Because remember, the light's coming from this way, so we can say that maybe there, there's a little bit of lighter green on this side, 
from whatever that, you know, these flowers, okay? Um, could I come back and, again, this is something that you kind of have to do as artists. You sort of have to kind of come back and do. For instance, if you, you know, do I need to add more shading on one side of the flowers? Now, there was too much water on my brush there because I didn't pinch it. And um, like that. Here we go. So a little more shading on this side of the flower. Maybe I want that no, see, as I it like comes that. down. See? So you've got to go back. Just stop and look at what you've got, right? And then see where and maybe one needs to come out here like this to fill in this corner more. Maybe I want it um, a little bit lighter here over that. Let's see. Pure white. Let's see. I'm out, almost out of paint here, but there you go. But, you know, if, if you dry and then go, if you don't like something, you can wipe it off. Experiment. I guess that's what I would tell you to do, is to sort of experiment around. Let's just have something coming up like that. So you, remember, we don't want just a, like a headband around this fountain. And I think I want a little bit of darker green, a kind of a blue-green color. Your thalo blue is your blue-green color, all right? Your thalo blue is your nice blue-green, deep blue-green color. A little magenta with that makes a really pretty... Let's see, where's white? We're all white. Sue's so, asking, any suggestions for how to hang, mount, or frame the canvas sheets from the pads? Yes, I have a great thing. We have a video on YouTube on how to do that. It's a, it's a cute one with a frog on the, on the thing. I actually did a video on how to do that. What you do is you take the, you use that you know, glue, and you glue it to like a piece of foam core. That glue. You, use you can't a, say you that use, glue. Well, I said what it was in the video. I forget what it is now. We have so much glue, but you do that. You glue it. You've got to glue it to Alexa's your. Um, to us. You've got to glue it to your um, uh, your background. Uh, you, no, I can't talk and think and paint and six things. I'm focused on this. All I can tell you is we have a video on how to do it. How's that? <laughs> I can't do that. You know, you saw me do it, John. I did see you do it. I thoroughly enjoyed that video. Yeah, it was funny. It was, it was how not to do it, really. Basically, it was a video on how not to frame it yourself. <laughs> it was fun. It was one of our funniest videos. It is a great video, just funny videos, right? Here's a little ultramarine blue. Now, look here. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to um, a little bit of white paint here. Get a little bit of ultramarine blue. Come up here with the color I want. Pinch the brush. I can darken the color up here a little bit if I needed to. You've got so much leeway when you dry this picture. You can start bringing the eye in toward the center. All kinds of things you can do. And I hope you had fun doing this. We appreciate you hanging in there this whole time. Let's put a little more white water here. And oh yeah, what was I going to do here? We still have 281 people with us. Thank you very much, you guys. We really you know, we appreciate, appreciate it. We're going to lighten there, this huh? up, up here again. If yeah, you haven't and subscribed, please do. Did you know like it doesn't half cost the people, you anything. Yeah, we don't we don't send you secret messages and, and you know knock on your door in the middle of the night. <laughs> Nothing bad happens to you. I don't know why people you no YouTube doesn't put you on some sort of mailing list that that, that you're going to be you started forever. You barely get notice, happen. notices when you're supposed to get them. Yeah, it, yeah, it barely even works. If you hit the bell, you barely get it. So I'm going to lighten this up here over here a little bit. I wanted this corner light up there. We go of my fountain here like that. There you go. What well, light Needed to lighten up that a little bit, and uh, that was good. Okay, a little bit of red, yellow. See, I'm getting down to the last of my colors here. You notice that when I pick a color and I pick a color, and then I go somewhere else and find a new place on the palette to mix it. And well, then I always, look at the colors. Let's back out and look at your palette for a while here. Yeah, so I mean, just saying, I, I need to I get another that. camera for the palette. I need a palette cam. That's coming up next. Yeah, palette cam, because then I, you know, then I have to come back and. Um, um, you know, what, that's what we're trying to do is just a new place. There we go, like that. So I'm going back and putting a few little shadows, but I think I, I feel like we're okay now. I feel like we've got it done. I will just stop and sign it because I think we're good. If we take this out of the way and put this one, you can kind of see where we've... I think we got pretty close to the, the original, don't you think? Yeah, let me put them side by side. Let's kill a couple of people on the side there. And yeah, I think we got you know I think we got pretty close to it. That's pretty close to it. I might want to when I'm looking at See. those. That's one of the nice tricks you do. When I'm looking at that. Um, one thing, if we're, regardless of what kind of paint you guys, please buy the professional white. Okay. You yeah, might want to come that up. will combine nicely with the basics. You, you know, it'll, it'll help you. 
Yeah, you need professional white. And if you could, if you could, if you were saying, I, I can't afford a lot of paint, which ones do I absolutely have to have? You must have a professional white, a heavy body white. And you really should have a cad red that's professional and a cad yellow. Because, you know, red, yellow, and blue are your primaries. And that somehow they can get the blues okay in those less expensive paints, but they're not very good with getting the reds. And they're not very good with um, um, getting the yellows. And, and those are th those are the people will say, well, my picture doesn't end up doesn't look like yours, and um, and that's a lot of times because you just your paint your pigment isn't covering. You know, it's all right. I think we'll stop. I think that's pretty good. I use my Judy little. Judy wants to see for your next fountain a chocolate fountain with strawberries. Oh, chocolate fountain with strawberries. Did Would you that guys? Be incidentally, <laughs> this is one of our more popular videos on YouTube. And you see, if you're liking these flowers, again, do you see where the light comes on top, the purple underneath? Not that, these are lilacs, but it's not that different. And then if you like this kind of flower, I invite you to come over to our website, gingercooklive.gallery. This is our newest release for this week. And again, it's a, it's a, it's a, a glass a jar full of lilacs with a window. Really pretty painting. I think you guys might really like that if you haven't done that yet. Wait, was that an old dead guy? Or was that yours? Uh, it, was a, it, was part, it was an old dead guy that I uh, re revisited. You, you, you I, I was inspired it. by him, but I changed it enough where it's really me at this yeah, point, I right? So. Yeah, it's, but, it, but um, you know, again, and then last week we did this live one, you know, this, the, the Dream Team, you know, we did the three color challenge. We've gotten so many fantastic pictures back from you guys that have done this. This was only, this was done with Thalo Blue, Cad Yellow Medium, White, and Cad. Um, red, cad red medium. I mean, can you imagine all these turquoises and different blues and grays and stuff? All just with, from three colors. Just from three colors. This is a great video if you really want to learn about mixing colors. That was great. Um, I'm going to sign this now. Oh, tell this. them what kind of pens we're using now. We are now, we, are we are now, these are our new favorite pens. They should send me dozens, but they didn't. They're by <laughs> Uni. They're called Poscas, P O S C A's. And why I like them is. Um, they work. They work. How's that? And, they're, and they don't they're really, smear. They don't smear. You've got to shake them. And here's the secret. We'll say this again. This is your <laughs> last secret. Here's the secret. Keep the cap on when you shake them, or you could end up spraying paint around the room. Just the tip of the paint going. You know, you wouldn't you want that. You sound like you're talking from experience. I've done that. Hmm. And then, look, you can take it like this. Now, look at here. You can take that pen. If you are having trouble doing some thin water bits, look at this. I want you to see. Let's just zoom in on that action. So, look at this. You can come right down here, come right up here. I just wanted you to see. And how they have different size tips. Real yeah, this fine. is the fine point tip, right? That's like the that. finest tip they make, right? I yeah, that's so. the fine point. So again, if you were having trouble and you just you didn't have a brush that was doing these nifty little tiny bits, it will do it for you. This again, this is cheat, not cheating. This is like a microwave. It's not cheating when you <laughs> use one, right? In fact, um, I, um, just is again. You can and they come. They come in different colors, and they're once they're dried, they're waterproof. So you know you can. This one is you know they're they're really dry. They're waterproof, and you can get some really fine uh, things. So I'm going to put the red slash through my name, like that, and I'd say um, I'd say so that's a wrap. We, we got a wrap, you guys, and we appreciate it very much that you, you know you are hanging in there with us. See one thing I want to do, but that's always the case. But why don't I tell you what? Um, as we're closing out, just any questions as we close out? I want to make sure I've got this light right here on the uh, very edge of this. Let me scroll back up and make sure we haven't missed anything. I think we've been doing pretty good with them. Have, have we doing pretty good with the? I want to make sure you know acrylics dry darker, so you think you've got all the light lights here, and then you and you don't. So I want to make sure I got the top of this edge light like that, right there. Okay, that's all. I just saw that, and I will pick it up and, and do it. And, of course, we're always interested in what you want to paint. So if you had fun, if you like this event with a, this crossover event, don't you think so? Kind of sounds like TV, the crossover event with the Dream Team where <laughs> you caught Cinnamon so Cooney, the art sherpa, that's my daughter. Uh, you know, you caught her, you know, her beautiful trout this morning around Rainbow noon. Rainbow trout. Rainbow trout, and then you went and, and painted mushrooms with Angela. You came to me. So if you like that kind of thing and you like it, and we'll do more of those. Won't do one next Saturday, like I say, it's Cinnamon's birthday, but we'll next do more Saturday's this summer. Next Saturday's not her birthday. Next Saturday's the 24th. Oh, the July 1st is. Yeah, July 1st is. But anyway, we're not doing, we're not going to do some for a while, but you'll still see us live um, this week on uh, YouTube.
Monday and Monday Tuesday, and Tuesday. We'll be live. And I don't know what we're painting yet because I'm still designing it. So you still have some input. You have time to tell me. Haha, what do you want me to paint for next Monday and Tuesday? You can put your two cents worth in. Oh, Mona, Mona has a question. I have a question. Can you always stream at this time? Miss Mona. Well, Mona lives in uh, think Sweden. Okay? Yeah. And here's the thing for the Europeans. This is the uh, they're eight hours ahead of us. So eight hours ahead of us is right now we're at. Um, She's a little past midnight. That's probably one in the morning. It's like one in the morning. That's really late, you know. So we, I'm, I'm on the. It's going by rank here. Cinnamon has 150,000 subscribers, so she gets to go first, right? Yeah, see, that's a problem. And then Angela has, like, I don't know, she's in 75,000. 75,000, so she gets to go second. And we just did 35,000. Woohoo! You guys, Yay, party thanks on. to you. Thanks for partying on. So, um, you know, if we had 150,000 subscribers, we might get to go first sometime. So think about that when you're subscribing, you know? <laughs> Help us get there. Help us get we there. We want to be first. You know, so anyway, appreciate it. They Thank want to you. see more of John's journey. Yeah, well, John hasn't had time to paint. We've been doing John's all been this. John's been playing with all the problems. But how, how great did the broadcast come out Zero today? hiccups. Flawless, right? It's absolutely gorgeous. No frames drop. Sounds good. And remember, 8 so. by 10s are standard frames. You can buy those anywhere, and they're inexpensive. And don't forget to paint the sides. See the difference it makes when you paint the sides? See? Yeah, I see that. Okay. All right, I guess that's Matthew. it for us. Another beautiful set episode of Ginger Cook Live in the Dream YouTube stream team? Stream team. Stream team, the YouTube stream team. That's a fun one. All right, everybody, we'll see you next time. Uh, Monday, 7.30. Tuesday, 7.30, Central Time. That would be Houston time for you Houston people. Everybody else, join us when you can. The left up. Sammy? Likes and comments and shares really make a difference. If you start putting this in playlists and sharing this on Facebook, and um, it really makes a difference. Thank you. Sammy Subscribe. has put on his swim goggles. He's getting ready to go in. He's got a Christmas surprise coming up that we'll have to, but it's, we haven't we announced have no it yet. We have no idea. He's been talking to his buddies. Talk to you guys later. Bye, Bye. now.